Um, if I could ask the others there just to switch on their, their cameras and microphones and maybe we try and answer a few questions. Again, there's some common teams that are coming up. Um, I think CCS seem to, or CCM seem to ra raise a few questions. Um, I suppose just to explain maybe the acronym to start with. And then I suppose just how do farmers check it? And again, I suppose it just comes back to an application system, I guess, more than anything. So, Robert, do you want to? Well, the CCM is the Corporate Customer Management System. Um, it's the department's, um, I suppose, base record for you where your herd number is recorded. Um, so you can check it through agfood.ie. Um, or if you contact your local DVO, they'll be able to go through uh, and tell you what check or to be able to verify what your record is. But we should be able to access that through agfood.ie. So, um, yeah, I think just, Robert, yeah, just, to, just for people there, that, that there's an email address for that. It's ccsadmin at agriculture.gov.ie. ccsadmin. The, the division has been renamed CCM, but they'll be using the CCS address for the foreseeable future. But if anyone has any particular queries on, on, on that end of things, registration of your name and or your details, or you need to check them or whatever, that's where you address the, those email queries, please. Okay, thanks, Dermot. And I guess then a related question there, I'd say from an advisor was, the advisor authorization forms, just in terms of, I suppose, processing. Yeah, again, we, we, we're we doing our best to deal with the backlog there at the moment, and we, we hope to get them all done by the time the tranche closes, but anybody who is in the system now will be allowed to roll over into the system to make their applications if we can manage it at all. Yeah, and, and the forms are on the TAMS3 website as well, if anyone's looking for the forms. Okay. And I suppose then, given that we're given a, a presentation on the, the Women's Farmer Capital Investment Scheme, questions coming up on, I guess, the anticipated timeline that we have. So I suppose just um, from my perspective, we're hoping to have the scheme out in the, in the next couple of days. Uh, we're working as fast as we can. We are conscious that we are coming towards the closing at the 30th. Um, but again, I guess we'll be keeping all of that under review. Um, but for the moment, that's where it is. But in any sense, tranche two starts immediately afterwards um, to run to the next closing date, which again, we have to look at our systems, consider when the next closing date would be. But as such, the system is open all the time. And it's just, we take a cut then on these uh, tranche cut dates. Um, I guess a question there that came in from someone on the arable side, why is fodder beet not included in the eligibility in an arable crop system? I suppose there, there, um, I suppose there is a carryover from before. The role from TAMS 3, from TAMS 2, that we had the list of investment, I suppose there is um, tillage crops, I suppose, rather than fodder, fodder crops. Um, silage, I suppose, for the beet, it is a fodder crop rather than maybe a true tillage crop is there for animal pr production. Um, so it is for tillage crops for to get that side going rather than the rather than for production of fodder for animals. And may, that's why maize isn't there as well. So it's yeah, it's actually fodder cattle. It's related right. to that, I suppose, production for tillage for non, I suppose, fodder usage. Okay, I, um, I guess there's a number of questions maybe, and again, it's just to go through the eligibility criteria for a woman farmer um, in the capital investment scheme, just, I suppose, just to clarify everything. So, so I guess it's how a woman farmer qualifies. There is questions on joint venture between husband and wife. Um, does that pull the person in? And I guess it's to break it down then into that need for the education qualifications as best. Yeah, so a joint venture doesn't qualify. Um, where you have a joint venture, the must um, all partners must be um, women, must be women marked as female on CCM. So it, it would it, if there was a par a registered farm partnership, it would be okay. But as a joint venture, it's not. 
and it's just one herd um, seen as an, one entity, but that's not eligible. Um, so it is important, I suppose, um, that you be marked up as a registered farm partnership, and in which case then, I suppose, if you are farming and it's part of the business in 2022, um, on the B, the BIS application and the BPS application, then you are eligible to apply. Um, if you are have only just joined the business in 23 and be afterwards, then you must have a green cert application um, have your educational qualification for green cert, same way as a young farmer would. Okay, and then a, a giant herd number if the woman is on it. Are we saying that it's a registered farm partnership only or a, a woman farmer on her own herd number? A woman farmer on her own herd number would be fully eligible. Okay, or a registered yeah. farm partnership. Farm partnership, yeah. Or in a company that has a company director in a company. And okay. The company secretary wouldn't be eligible directly. They'd have to be company. Um, they, there is a requirement for a minimum um, control of the business. Okay, so a company secretary with a profit sharing arrangement isn't sufficient. It needs to be a director. It needs to be a director, yes. Okay. Um, then there's a number of them then that are coming in, blending in with the registered farm partnership question. So if a farm has one woman farmer, one young farmer, and a third person in a registered farm partnership, which ceiling is applicable? That's that's three people, so it's two part two. Once it's minimum two people in a registered farm partnership, it's 160,000 euro off. Ceiling. And then, and that's at the 60% ceiling because there's uh, two people. Yes, because there's two. Yeah, so you can have, um, yeah, one one woman who's qualified qualifying as a one farmer, and then a young farmer, quali an eligible young farmer as well. So, so you get the 60% for the 460,000. Okay, and the same principle then if there's two women and one man in a registered farm partnership, again, because there's two women, then there's two ceilings at the 60%. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It would be yes. And then if it's one woman and one one man, then it's just uh, 90,000 at 60% and the balance at... 40 percent yes okay okay um then you were be, being very specific as well about which scheme to apply for to qualify in the women farmer that you have to apply under the women farmers capital investment scheme is the entry point for the scheme not through the animal welfare yes you must apply in the relevant scheme to get the, the percentages by the scheme. So if you apply, you if you apply in the animal welfare scheme, you'll just be paid on forty percent, um, not the not the six percent. You must apply under the women farmer scheme to get sixty percent grant aid. Okay. And also, so if there's go on, Brian. If there's a woman farmer and a young farmer in a registered farm partnership, they must go into the women farmers, not the young farmers. Okay, so the woman farmers is the priority one in the higher. Women, in a nutshell, women farmers can't get paid in young farmers if they're only women farmer eligible. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, so so where there is the registered farm partners between a, a woman farmer and a young male farmer, they must apply under the women farm scheme to be paid the sixty percent on the full hundred and sixty thousand. If they apply in the young farm scheme, they'll only get six percent on the first ninety, and forty percent on the second, on the on the balance. Okay, so we have a hierarchy going through that. Yes. That the woman farmer first at sixty percent, and then the young farmer next at the sixty percent. Yes, where you have a registered farm partnership between a, a woman and a young farmer. Yes. Okay, and then like I suppose throwing in a, a curveball. So which scheme do you apply for then for less? But that's less is at 60% already. Less, less you apply in less because the less investments are not in the women farm scheme. They're only in the less scheme. Okay. That's the, the same, same with farm safety. And farm safety. Yes. 
because they're already at the 60%. Okay. Um, Brian, pull in any additional questions you see there if I'm, I'm skipping anything over. Just a joint venture again there, joint venture with a daughter and father. If they're on a herd number on their own and in a joint venture, they don't qualify. But if they're on a joint herd number and in a register of our partnership or a company, and the, the daughter has 20% shareholder in the partnership or the company, they will qualify, but not as a joint venture. Okay. And then uh, a woman registered in a registered farm partnership in 20, 2023, will they qualify for TAMS in 2023? Or what is their requirement? They'll need to have the documentation. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if they weren't, if they weren't, if they're not involved with documents to prove it for the qualifying year, then they will need to do the educational ones. Yeah, for twenty twenty three. Okay. Yeah. They so can apply. Yeah. They, they can apply now and fill out the course as commenced, awaiting results. We'll pay at forty percent, and we'll give the twenty percent top up then once the course is completed. Okay, so that's the evidence of the cert after, can come afterwards. Yeah, afterwards. Yeah, application that for doing the course is enough to get you into the tranche for application. Okay, and then just to go through that educational qualification, Dermot. Again, just in terms of that reference year of twenty twenty two, is that moving with the years or is it tied down? No, that's it. Then from that, from from then on, it's it's uh, it's it's educational requirements. Okay, so it's a grand it's a grandparenting year that you had to be. It's, it's reference by. years. Yeah, you have to be you have to be involved in the farming at the reference year twenty twenty of twenty twenty two to qualify this year. You can still use it to qualify in future tranches. Yeah, perfect. But we won't be resetting. We won't be resetting that. Um, yeah yeah that the year 2022 remains the same year for all years of application for times three yes for the farmers yeah <laughs> perfect um i suppose then just moving on it's a couple of then just on specifications um is there a specification for the the road underpass road. yeah we're working on the underpasses they were working on past the way in the S199 will be updated shortly. It's so that is being developed, worked on. Okay. Uh, then, in terms of, I suppose, when someone gets paid, um, someone has applied for a solar water pump. Uh, so, when can they purchase that water pump? For a water pump, it's mobile, they can go straight away. But it's the expenditure is eligible after application, but only after if approved, then you will be paid. Yeah. So, so it's at your own it's at your own risk. Okay. That's if, if you don't get selected, yeah. If you don't get selected in RAS, you may end up not not having to pay for the full, not getting grant on it at all. Okay. So that's a key message for any mobile equipment. And we provided a list of all the the items that are considered mobile. Yes, that's on the website. Okay. It's on the list under the list of investments on Tams Three page. Okay. Um, then there's a couple related to, I suppose, the dairy cow number limit. So I suppose just to clarify that piece of your presentation again. So the 120 yeah. limit and the 160, just to describe who do you apply to? Yeah, the 120 limit applies to the dairy equipment scheme, the women farmer scheme, and the organic scheme. So for anyone in those three schemes, they must have 100, 120 dairy cows or less on average over the year um, preceding the application. For young farmer, in the young farmer scheme only, um, they can have up to 160 cows. Um, in the year proceeding, but for applicants with between 120 and 160 dairy cows, they must give a declaration that they will not increase the herd num the number of dairy cows um, for five years following on from when they actually get paid for the milking investments. The, limit, the cow limit only applies to milking machine investments, 
it doesn't apply to any other investments. So for I suppose if you have a woman farmer and a young farmer um, in an in a registered farm partnership, I suppose they would have to decide which if they want to have an increase in the cow numbers or an increase in the grant rate when making the applications. Because uh, under the young women farmer scheme, even if there's a young farmer involved, the cow limit is 120, 120 dairy cows on average over the preceding yeah. year. It's not it's done by scheme rather than by by the applicant. Okay. So the cow limit is managed by the scheme application rather yes. than by the applicant. Yeah. Perfect. Um, in relation to the young farmer. Does the far does a farmer have to be farming less than five years or just under 40? For the young farmer, it is less than five years. It's set up within the last five years and under 40 and have okay. the educate green cert. So it's both criteria together. It's both criteria for the young farmers. OK. Um, a question then, if you have not claimed be, uh, your Medibis application, are you excluded despite working full time? So I'm assuming this is again coming to the reference year of 2022. You you need a, B, a BIS application, um, you need a BPS application last year. B, exclude, working full time isn't actually relevant. It's whether or not you have the, BIS, the BPS application. Um, so if you're not on the BPS, in 2022, um, you do need, you need to make sure you ha you would have your educational qualifications if you've actually then on this year, on the 2023 BIS application. Okay. Um, then another practical question: Someone has applied under the Animal Welfare Scheme. How did you withdraw? Just send. We don't have functionality yet. Just send an email to Tams at agriculture.gov.ie and if you have to make another application just carry on and make another application we'll withdraw it when you send in an email at a later date when we get the functionality yeah yeah and, and you can make the application straight away under the as soon as the one farm schemes open you can have an application under the two schemes at the same time okay um I guess another question that came up there a couple of times was again in relation to the women farmers scheme. Why is there an age limit of sixty six when it's not there for other sub schemes? Women farmer are eligible for forty percent until whatever age. It's just for the sixty percent. It's just for the twenty percent top up because they have to yeah. keep the investment for five years. It's it's trying to get an in, in, encourage an in, increase in women into farming at that younger age. To, and yeah, that was in line with. Generally, I suppose keeping younger farmers involved in in farming. Yeah, it's trying to get that right balance between the younger yeah. farmer and allowing the the women rebalancing in the gender to come into it. Yeah. Um, in relation to minimum slurry storage, can I apply for TAMS to meet the legislative requirement, or again just to run no. through that part again, Ross? If um, the minimum storage store, you must ha have your min meet your minimum legal requirements for slurry storage before applying. Um, we cannot grant aid um, of anyone to actually come up to the legal minimum. Now, I suppose it, it works on the the polluter pays principle. Um, you should be you should be meeting that legal minimum requirement as it stands. So we cannot. Um, so it is for farmers to actually um, come up to that requirement. Um, slurry storage should be put in place prior to getting increasing the animal numbers rather than rather than the other way around so it is an important one but we cannot grant aid it but we can if you have your if you are thinking of increasing your animal numbers in, next year we can grant aid additional slurry storage before you get those animals that's what is aimed at trying to encourage investments and for the storage up front yeah and in relation to that required slurry storage, that does that apply across all investment items or just? Um, There's a certain range of them. It's mainly 
animal housing, storage, storage, silage effluent, uh, silage pits, um, then certain milking machines, bulk, uh, milk, milk storage tanks, and so generally animal housing, slurry storage, effluent producing structures. Um, that, that is where it's at at the moment, and then the milking machine and bulk milk storage investments. Okay, thanks, Robert. And then, Robert, also in your presentation, you mentioned about trade-ins being accepted. So again, there was a question came up there of someone that has availed of TAMS2 to invest in a bulk tank. Um, but the question is, how long do they have to keep it before they have to trade in? They keep, must keep it a minimum of five years from when they were paid under TAMS2. So if someone purchased a bulk mill tank in 2017 under TAMS2, and we're paid in 2017, they could trade that in now um, against a new bulk milk tank. But if they've only purchased it in 2020 or paid on it in 2020, they must wait till after 2025 before they can actually trade in that bulk milk tank. They can apply for a second tank, but then what the first tank must re also remain in place. The one from TAMS 2 must still be there if they want to apply for one under TAMS 3 at this point. Okay. Um, Dermot, Brian, have a scan through questions there. I'm sorry, coming towards the end of my list. Is it possible to avail of Solar Tams grant on the farm dwelling house? The dwelling house can be included in the solar survey, but the panels can't go on the dwelling house. If you check the solar terms and conditions, it'll detail that. Okay. Another one there that came up there is in relation to someone was asking, you mentioned all types of fencing, bovine and sheep fencing, just to confirm that equine is eligible and yes. also an update on Cresuit. Equine, equine fencing is also in the scheme. Um, the specification S148 is currently update, being updated. Um, Creosote treated fence posts are no longer you can no longer purchase them since the end 30th of April, and it's been illegal for anyone to actually sell creosote treated posts. Um, so, from a TAMS3 point of view, you must, um, you, ca you cannot apart, you have to use alternative treatments. Um, there are cop copper um, organic preservatives available on the market, which are actually certified to IS436 and are fully meet the requirements of the department specification S148. Um, the, we are working with the NSAI at the moment um, to actually update, review the their, specific, their standard IS436 and 437 um, to allow for alternatives to the copper organics, the, what they call the copper oil treatments. Um, a lot of people know, I suppose, Tanisov would have heard of that one. So that, that is there being updated to allow those to be brought um, certified in accordance with the standard. And then they will become eligible under the under the scheme under S148 for ground aided fencing. And that's ongoing work at the moment. Yeah. So there there is alternatives in the there are alternatives currently on the market for tim for um timber treatments. So it was only one option. Um the copper organic treatments were always there. Um the important thing is that, that they are certified in accordance with IS436. Uh, verifies that the posts have been properly dried and then properly treated. And um, we know there are other ones, there are posts on the market that are not um, certified to IS436 and would, may not have been dried properly or treated properly and won't perform as well as the 436 certified products. And um, you can also then have um, under S148, the um, concrete and steel and plastic posts are also all eligible. Okay. Um, then on the specifications again, is there a definition for the base station associated with the animal health and fertility monitoring? That was on the way. So, yeah, just just to put it down there, John. That we will be getting that sorted out when the specs are updated. Yeah, there will be. Okay. But it'll be pretty, it'll be broad enough to include the vast majority of commonly available pieces, as far as I know. Okay. Um, then in relation to Eligibility for the Women Farmer Capital Investment Scheme. I'm not on the herd number. We have a giant farm bank account. We are the giant owners on the farm. 
we were taxed jointly. Do I need an educational qualification to get the grant? Yes, if you aren't on the yeah. BPS in 2022. Yeah, so it comes Which back to the B BPS is the critical item. And again, they can apply now and get paid on the 40% in the Women Farmer Scheme when the qualification is complete, they'll get the top up. Okay. Um, there's, a couple, there's a couple there on extensions. It will, will be more or less the same as TAMS too. There will be extensions in certain circumstances in TAMS 3. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's a question that the nitrates relevant investments are actually listed in the actual terms and conditions of the scheme. And there's a question where find out the nitrates relevant investments. They're in Annex B of each of the actual terms and conditions. It lists the full list of investments and whether they need planning permission or and whether they're nitrates relevant or not. Okay. Uh, technical question there just on the planning permission. Is there a sizing limit for animal housing that doesn't need planning? We, um, we we look for either a full plan permission or a declaration of exemption. So um, there are, um, if a building is less than 200 square metres and the total animal housing on the holding is less than 300 square metres, then it is exempt from planning. As long as it's more than eight, 10 metres from the road, more than 100 metres from any other building, um, so any other properties, um, it's less than eight metres in height not in an SAC, SPA or other special area or designated special um, area of protection. So rather than looking at that, we look for a declaration of exemption for all structures or full planning permission. So it is a matter of applying to your local county council for a declaration of exemption if the building is less than 200 square metres and you, you think it's exempt. So we need one or the other. Okay. I think we're just coming to the end of the questions there at the moment. Just following um, on from that one, Robert, there's one there on the sheep handling equipment planning permission. Is um, fixed, planning permission needs if for a fixed sheep handling equipment? Yes, planning permission it is because that that is a, it's a particularly potentially an effluent producing structure from the um, if you're applying um, dips or sprays. So it requires planning permission the same as an animal handling unit. And without a dip tank? Without a dip tank, um, uh, to ju just go back and check the actual things. It does, we've listed it out, so it's, 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 back to check it's it. similar to a cattle crush. If it's in an existing yeah. existing yeah, crush existing. or if it's 10 metres away from a road or 100 metres from a neighbour, it doesn't require planning yeah. permission. Yes. I'm just checking that, yeah. So again, okay. do it is worth checking. Um, yeah. So yeah. So yeah. So they are the fixed units with or without the tank. We do look for it. Um, um, planning permission to be provided to or declaration of exemption. So to be provided when you're actually making that up when you're submitting the application. The mobile equipment we don't, but the fixed ones we do. Okay. Um, then I guess just another one just related to eligibility. Is there a minimum um, herd size in terms of applying uh, bovine or equine? For equine, uh, it's a minimum of three equines um, on the last census. Bovines, we don't actually have a minimum. No. So if you are transferring from, say, a tip, changing over from a tillage to a, a dairy unit um you can apply for the the bovine investments before you actually purchase the bovines which would be the correct way of doing it to have the slurry storage and housing facilities in place before getting the animals okay and the same yes sorry john just before we finish there's, there's a good field queries coming in there uh, that require a bit of clarification that we're not going to be able to give in the time that's left i'd say so Look, there's yeah. going to be a requirement for a little bit of a frequently asked question or clarification document for us to come up with a, 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 when the scheme is launched or shortly thereafter when we get a chance to go through some of the questions that are outstanding there already, if that's okay. 
Okay, yeah. So we'll be trying to just integrate these into any specification clarifications that are needed. Yeah, yeah. No, there's, 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 there's a lot of different options being mentioned to us here uh, and different scenarios. And, you know, and obviously we'll have to consider them all and see what we can do to let yeah. people have as much information as possible. Yeah, I suppose I'll just ask one last question then on the specification side of it is the virtual fencing, just given that there's been a a few questions came up. So virtual fencing, is it eligible? No, it's not. It's no. Okay. Okay. So with that, maybe as Derma pointed out, there's a couple now that are just getting very bespoke in the responses that would be needed. So we'll try and address any of those issues. We'll have noted these in the specification updates that will be provided on TAMS. Um, I suppose Maybe Robert, is there any key messages you just want to leave the group with before we wind up? And then maybe no one wants to say anything as well just before we finished. I suppose um I suppose with the women in terms of the investments, the full range of investments there are published already. I appreciate the terms conditions aren't there. Um a lot of this the generic terms are going to be very similar to the other schemes that are already launched. So um, do take the opportunity to look at the list of investments if you're interested to actually make to know what you want to actually apply for. Um, you can start preparing for your me the measurements required. Um, it's all set out in expansion notes so you can measure up the buildings and have an application ready to go. Make sure your planning is in place, and the drawings are ready to go. So we I mean, appreciate the timelines are tight. Make sure then all authorization forms are done and you've checked on CMM. TCM that you are that everything is correct there the details are correct and that will enable an application to be submitted quickly once the scheme is opened. Okay, thanks, Robert. Mona, did you want to any just final closing? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just like to come in there for anyone who's watching tonight. We have identified there are gaps that we were trying to fill with the TAMS. So anyone who's affected by these gaps, if you'd like to contact us on social media. Um, we'd like to speak to yourselves because the idea of the TAMS was to get as many people as possible into the system and with the criteria we understand there is has to be um, I suppose uh, specifications but a lot of women are going to be excluded again from this so we'd like to talk to those women and see how we can I suppose work to the next program so anyone who'd like to contact us, we're on social media and are, are, we're very publicised. So I know there are probably women on here tonight that are going to be affected by like uh, exclusions from it, like being on the CMS and whatever. So we'd like to talk to those women um, because this is why we were set up to identify these women and to try and support these women. So that would be our big thing. But And as well as that, just to thank everyone for their time tonight. And um, it, as I said, this is the first step in working to the next greater goal. Okay, thanks Mona. Um, and again, some of those points are noted and again, we maintain ongoing contact on it as well. Um, I suppose with that, again, I think we've given a good overview of what the Women Farms Capital Investment Scheme, we hope to have it over the next couple of days available. And uh, thanks to Robert, Dermot, Brian, and others in terms of just contributing to the event this evening. So with that, a good evening.